Greetings and welcome to the channel. This is Michaela from Team Retro, where we like retro games and the devices that bring them to us. Today, we're looking at something a little bit different. This handheld is actually not meant for gaming. This is the GPD Micro PC 2. I didn't actually buy this handheld for gaming initially. I purchased it to use as a portable setup device so I can film tutorials on how to install custom OS's or set up SD cards for emulation. But it got me thinking, what can this device actually do? What types of games can we play on it? And how much power can we squeeze from the productivity-minded Intel N300 processor inside? That's what we're gonna find out in this video. We're gonna take a device that isn't meant for gaming and figure out how to do some gaming on it. So let's dive in and get to work. At time of recording, the GPD Micro PC2 can be purchased from several different sources. Their Indiegogo campaign is still open, but units are also showing up on Amazon and through resellers as well. I actually purchased my unit from WhatGeek for $570, but then I was charged a $130 tariff by DHL, bringing the cost up to $700. If you're in the US, you're probably best off picking this up from Amazon or going through the Indiegogo page if you don't mind waiting a little bit longer. Now this video isn't a full review, it's more of a showcase, but let's hop onto our mount and ride into Spectown just so we could see what we're working with as far as gaming potential goes. The GPD Micro PC2 is powered by an Intel N300 processor utilizing four cores and four threads. The GPU is using Intel's integrated graphics. The device has 16 gigabytes of LPDDR5 RAM. The GPD Micro PC2 comes with 512 gigabytes of storage via a 2280 NVMe SSD. The storage is expandable, but you can also expand storage via a micro SD card slot. The screen is a seven inch FHD LCD display with a resolution of 1920 by 1080. Giving the device life is a 27.5 watt hour battery. For connectivity, this handheld has Wi-Fi as well as Bluetooth 5.2. The device ships with Windows 11. So why would you want to game on something like this? This is more of a pocket PC meant for like IT individuals or professionals or people who travel a lot and need quick access to a computer for productivity. Well, there's a couple of different reasons. One, this device is very pocketable. Take a quick look at the GPD Micro PC2 next to my iPhone 15 Pro Max. This is crazy to me. The GPD Micro PC2 is bigger, but not by much. So this can feasibly fit into a pocket depending on the type of pants you're wearing. Shorts would be just fine. Jeans are a little bit tighter, but the Micro PC2 definitely fits in the inside of a suit pocket. I do have to reiterate that this is a PC that is productivity first and gaming device second. So it's meant for checking emails or doing a quick edit on a Word document. But when on the go, you could sneak in a few games as well. Now speaking of on the go, you probably have a shiny new iPhone 17, 17 Air, or 17 Pro that you need to charge. So for that, I'm gonna take a quick break because I have something new to show you. This is the Ugreen Magflow Magnetic Power Bank. This is a battery pack with a 10,000 milliamp hour capacity. It supports the latest Qi 2 25 watt standard and can charge an iPhone 17 Pro or 17 Pro Max to 50% in 38 minutes. The 10,000 milliamp hour capacity meets airline safety standards, so you can use it to charge your devices while traveling. It can charge an iPhone 17 Pro or Pro Max around two times, making this device ideal for commuting, travel, and everyday use. This power bank has a built-in USB-C cable that supports 30 watts PD input 
and output, allowing you to fast charge your devices and recharge the power bank at the same time. The built-in braided USB-C cable also works as a carrying strap when not in use. With two additional USB-C ports and a wireless charging pad, you can charge three devices at the same time, including low-powered Android handhelds such as the Retroid Pocket 5. Using the built-in LED screen, you can see the remaining battery percentage clearly in real time. Ugreen also offers a MagFlow 2-in-1 magnetic wireless charger, which also supports up to 25-watt fast charging, and you can charge your iPhone, AirPods, and Apple Watch simultaneously. Check out the Ugreen MagFlow lineup in the video description. Now let's go back to how you can use the GPD Micro PC 2 for gaming in addition to productivity. And we need to start with the staggering amount of I.O. There are two USB-C ports, a USB-A port, a micro SD card slot, an HDMI out, and even a wired Ethernet port. If you have one of the more recent offerings from 8 Do, like this Ultimate 2 controller dongle here, you can also plug it into the USB-C ports. Having a controller dongle or some type of controller is necessary here because there are no actual controller inputs on this device like there are on some of GPD's other offerings. This means that you will have to carry an extra controller with you for certain games. I usually keep a standard Xbox controller in my travel bag for situations where I might want to dock a handheld to a monitor or TV. I might even want to connect to my monitor at work when I have my lunch break and just get in a good like 10 minutes of a game. And in this case, I'll simply connect via Bluetooth. But say you have another controller with a 2.4 gigahertz dongle like this one from 8-bit do I actually reviewed this controller and I will leave a link in the description But you could see that with a 2.4 gigahertz connection everything works just fine You can also potentially use a Bluetooth telescopic controller meant for tablets like the GameSir X5s this will fit the GPD Micro PC 2 pretty well in the sense that it doesn't block any ventilation. However, the device also doesn't necessarily sit flush on the handheld either. It also looks a little silly when the handheld is in tablet mode, but it can be used in this manner. I found it better to put the controller on with the device open. It made a little bit more sense that way, and I still had access to the mouse and keyboard when I needed it. Now you'll want to keep a few things in mind with this device. One is to temper your expectations on the types of games you can actually play on this handheld. You're not going to be playing AAA games natively on this device. So if that's more what you're interested in, you might want to look into something a little bit more powerful like the ROG Ally. As I mentioned before, this is a PC first and a gaming device second. As a result, this micro PC is more of a lightweight and indie gamer, and there's not even any TDP controls available. However, thanks to my good friend Kay over at Kay's Retro Gaming, I learned how to top out the TDP to 12 watts in the BIOS. Kay also recently reviewed this device, so definitely go check that out if you want to know more about the GPD micro PC too. So let's head into the BIOS and adjust our TDP. We could do this by going into Settings, System, Recovery, and under Advanced Startup, select Restart Now. Wait for the system to reboot, and you will end up in a recovery menu, and the device is going to be defaulted to a portrait orientation. Let's temporarily rotate our screen, and I'm going to use the down arrow to navigate to Troubleshoot, and press Enter. Then navigate to Advanced Options and select UEFI Firmware Settings. The system will reboot into the BIOS and right on the main screen is OEM System Configuration. Simply scroll down to Configurable TDP and set it to 12 watts. We can go as high as 15 watts but 12 should give us a nice balance of performance 
and battery life. Now hold FN and press four to save and exit and we can reboot into Windows. With that simple change, we can now do some game testing. And I did find that I was able to play a good chunk of 2D games and even some 3D games with varying degrees of success for both. Dave the Diver is one of my go-to games for testing, and I'm sad to say it did not perform as expected and was actually pretty laggy. I had to resort to using NVIDIA GeForce Now in order to play this game, and you're going to find that cloud gaming is your friend with a low-powered device like this. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, Rita's Rewind, ran just fine, and OG Skyrim also ran fine at medium settings, but it did struggle to hit that 60 FPS sweet spot. For emulation, you can attempt to go as high as PS2 with a native resolution. Here's God of War 2, and it's running pretty decently. However, it does dip into the 50s and sometimes 40s for frame rate, struggling to maintain that 60 FPS. I wasn't expecting to be able to push this device this far, but it can handle PS2 with varying degrees of success. And every PS2 game I tried never felt unplayable, just a bit stuttery at times. But let's take the controller out of the picture, because you can also use the built-in controls for some keyboard and mouse gaming. The trackpad and mouse button placement make this a great handheld for point and click games. Simple menu navigation games like this one are perfect for this device. It's super lightweight, so you can hold it like you would a controller. You use the trackpad with your right thumb and you use the mouse buttons on the left for left and right click. It's actually surprisingly intuitive and led me to search up some older point and click DOS box games like Star Trek Next Generation of Final Unity. I had the original CD of this game. I never got very far because the game is just notoriously difficult. This device made me want to pick up and try that game again. I ended up going through a bit of a rabbit hole on my abandonware, and I found some really neat retro point and click games that I didn't even know existed. Like this Beavis and Butthead game. I had no clue that Beavis and Butthead had a point and click adventure in the 90s. To me, this is the absolute best use case for the GPD Micro PC 2, but let's also not forget that this device can be flipped around and used as a tablet. So touch native games can also potentially work well when you need a quick break. Card games like Bellatro work just fine, and if you're a little bit more competitive and have internet access, you could dive into something like Match the Gathering Arena. While touch controls were responsive and the game was playable, I could tell there were moments where the frame rate would dip. This wasn't the most efficient use case for the Micro PC 2, but it did work. I also found the mouse and keyboard acceptable for classic RPGs, and you can use the WASD setup to play something like the Final Fantasy Pixel Remasters. Chrono Trigger is a little clunkier because diagonal controls when moving around are a little bit clunky. I'd rather play this with a controller, but if all you have is this device, it's still playable. As long as you don't mind mapping buttons to keyboard controls or using the mouse instead. And in this use case, yeah, the Micro PC 2 can be a very valid turn-based RPG device. Which brings us to the end of this video. I didn't want to do a full review on the GPD Micro PC 2 because it's not really something I bought as a gaming machine. I bought this thing for productivity. And if you're watching this video, you probably did too. Even though it is mostly a productivity machine, I wanted to show that yes, if you have this device and are interested in gaming on it, there are quite a few games you can actually play on this. Due to the price, however, I wouldn't recommend you purchase this device if you are only interested in gaming. I'll be keeping this one around, and you are gonna see it in future videos when I'm giving tutorials that require a Windows PC. Well, let me know what you think in the comments below, and please feel free to continue the conversation on the Retro Handhelds Discord, where you can find me hanging out in between videos. And, if you want to support the channel like these wonderful people on the screen, you can do so by going to my Patreon page. Links for all these places are in the description. 
But that'll do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and please be sure to like and subscribe if this video was helpful to you in any way. Every smash of that button helps the channel grow and allows me to get more content out to you. Until next time, bye for now, and don't stop believing.